Hello and welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to do a few things. The first thing we need to do um, is with the layout we need to find out the width of the current design. So we need to find out the width from this left hand edge of the design over to this right hand edge. Um, so the first thing you will need to do if you go up to view and go to show and if you go to guides you'll now see that there's two blue lines either side of the, the design so if I just zoom in with control and plus and then just hold my spacebar to drag across you can see here's one of the guides here which is perfectly in line with this left hand edge and if we go over to this side we've got another guide that's perfectly in line as well so if we just zoom back out so we can see the actual design now we need to know like I said the width between the two guides now we can look here, look up here at the ruler um, but I normally find it doesn't give you an accurate uh, reading right down to the single pixel. So the way that I do this is I actually turn this um, info palette on. Now if it's not over here by default what you have to do is go to window and then just, just click on info. So if you just go to the rectangular marquee tool at the top and if you just click right next to the blue line the marquee tool will snap to the left hand side and just drag across until it snaps to the right hand side and let go. Now if we click on the information, you can now see if I zoom in, it says the width is 950 pixels. So now we know the, the width, so that's fine. So if we just click on the eye symbol to take that off, and then if we press the V key to go back to the move tool, and then if we do control D, that will deselect the selection. Now the next thing we need to know, we need to know what colour the background is. Now it looks like it's black. Um, but it could be sli a slightly different colour. So if we zoom in towards the bottom, like so, and if we select the eyedropper tool here on the left hand side, and if we just click on the area, the black area, like so, and if we go to the top palette here, and then we get the hex value down here, all the different colours we can choose from, and it's actually selected the colour right here, so it's not exactly black it's slightly off it's, so it's 191919 so now we have these two properties the next thing we need to do is go over to Dreamweaver and start to set up the website now that we're over in Dreamweaver we need to create a few folders and a few files so the first thing we're going to do the index.php that we created previously uh, to test to make sure PHP was working we're just going to delete that because we don't need that anymore so that's that gone um, we we're going to create a couple of folders, so we're going to right click on the top folder up here uh, and go to new folder, you probably can't see that because it's gone off the screen but just select new folder which is the second option from the top and then we're going to call this style so this is where we keep our style sheets uh, again we're going to click on the top option again and click new file and then we're going to call this index.php and then we're going to right click on the style folder and click new file and we're going to call this style.css and that's all we need for now so we're going to double click on the index file to open that up and then we're also going to double click on the style folder to open that up and then you'll see at the very top here we now have two tabs so the first tab is the index page and the second tab is the style page if you want to you can rearrange the tabs so if you click on say the style tab and drag it to the left it now moves into the first position and the index page moves to the second position uh, so again I'm just going to change it back so index is the first one so the first thing we're going to do in the index page is link to the style.css page so underneath the meta just above the title we're going to type in the following so link rel and we'll just say style sheet. So basically, like I said, we're linking to the style sheet, and then the href is gonna is basically gonna point to the style sheet. So we just click on browse, and we go into style, and then click on the style page. And as you can see here, it's now added it in. So style.css, and then we're just gonna close that off. So that's the style sheet now added. So to save that, just do Control S on the keyboard. Um, so if we now go to the style sheet, so in the style sheet we're going to say body, and 
then inside of the brackets we're going to say background color is going to be 191919 and then we'll close that off and then just save that again with control s if we go back to the index page we're in the source view at the moment so if we go to design you can now see that the, the background has completely changed to that color of 191919 so if we just jump back over to Photoshop just to check the layout, because we're going to create some divs uh, for the actual structure now. So looking at the actual design in Photoshop, uh, we need to keep the whole website center in the page. So that's an easy thing to do. We'll sort that out in a second. Uh, we need to create a logo div for here in the top left-hand corner. Uh, we also need to create a search div here in the right-hand corner. So we'll do those things now. So if we just jump over into the code view, so in the body, we're going to start creating some div tags. So we're going to use div. We're going to create an ID. And we're going to call this page wrap. So this is going to keep the website in the center of the window. So we're going to add the comments on the end just so we know which div it belongs to. So I'm going to say page wrap. Like that. So we now need to put all of our code inside of this div as it would be the, the, the wrap around the whole website. So inside of here then, we need to create a div with an ID and we're going to call this logo. And again, we'll just close that off and add our comments on the end. And then we'll create another div with an ID of search box and again we'll create the comment so we know which it belongs to so search box so if we just sort out our spacing so all we've done then if we've created a page wrap div that goes around all of the content and then we've created two other divs for the one for the logo and one for the search box so now we need to style these so if we just go into the style sheet so we're going to use page wrap and we're going to say the width is going to be 950 pixels because that's the, the pixel width that we found out in Photoshop. We're going to say the height. We're going to say auto. So the height of the page wrap is going to be set to auto so it expands and contracts with the content inside. Uh, but what we're going to do, we'll add in this property so we can see it taking shape. We're going to say min height, just say 500 pixels. The minimum height of that page wrap div is now going to be 500 pixels. So if we just jump back to the index page and then go to the, the design view. So as you can see here, we've got these yellow dots. Now if we click on this one here, as you can see, it comes, starts from the top at the top of the page and comes down to here, which is 500 pixels from the top. And we know that this is the page wrap because you can see here we've got body and then we've got div with an ID of page wrap. So we know we're, we're targeting that particular div. So if we just jump back to the style sheet, the next property that we need to add is margin. So we want to keep this div directly in the middle of the screen, no matter what size resolution of screen people are using. So to achieve this, we say zero auto. So that will now keep it perfectly centered in the page. So just to, just to show you, if I actually change the, um, the background color of the div to white, now if we go to the index page, you can now see we've got this white div here and we've got the black background here. If I now preview this in a browser, so as you can see now in the browser window, the white page wrap div is now perfectly center in the middle of the page by using that the property margin zero auto. So if I just minimize this and go back to the style sheet, if I just take off the background because we don't want that. The next thing we need to do if we look at the source view, is we've got the logo and the search box. So we'll just quickly style those up. So if we just jump over to here, and if we type in logo, and 
And if we just give this a width of say 300 pixels, like I said, we can come back and change these values later on. And if we give it a height of say 75, we'll actually measure this out in the next chapter of the, um, the series. So if we just preview this in the design view, we can now see we have the logo div, which is now 300 pixels wide and 75 pixels high. And again, if we click on this one to select it, you get the solid yellow border. And you look down here and we're targeting the div with an ID of logo. So if we just go back to the code view, so we've got this search box that we want to um, style up as well. So if we just jump back to the CSS, so if we just type in search box, And we're going to say width 400 pixels. And again, the height will just say 75. If we just go back to the index page and then design, you can now see we have two the, the two divs, but the problem is we need to get the search box here up into the position to the right hand side of the logo div here. So the first thing we need to do is tell the search box here to float to the right hand side because at the moment it's defaulting to the left. So if we go to the style sheet and then go to the search box here and type in float right and go back to the index page, you can now see the div has floated to the right hand side but it's not in position um, next to the logo div. So all we have to do is tell the logo div to float to the left and then this will slide right up into position. So if we go to logo and type in float left and if we go back to the index page you can now see that they're both in position right next to each other uh, ready for content to be added into them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it here for now. I'll create another video, get that uplo uploaded as soon as I can. So as usual, thanks for watching. Please leave any comments below and I'll catch you in the next video.